good uh, Wednesday evening to you. I'm uh, going to just share a little bit from James again tonight, uh, talking about prayer. Um, yesterday, in a little devotion study guide that I have, uh, the title of the mess or the title of the devotion for that day was prayer eggs, and what it boiled down to is is kind of what I'm going through right now. Um, they were using the uh, scripture from Habakkuk, where it was talking about how Habakkuk was wrestling with God in prayer about Babylon. And God was being silent. And this went on, the, the person who was doing the devotion, it said it went on for like six decades before God really ever answered Habakkuk. But it said what, what was the message to Habakkuk and the same message to us today, and especially for me, is that we have to wait for God's appointed time. And I know that with a job and a place for us to live up here, it's on God's time and and it's going to happen. But they asked the question, how difficult do you find it to wait while God works? And while you wait, how can you obey God in what he has already given you to do? And then they did a little prayer. It says, dear, dear God, help me to trust you to work while I am waiting. And that's what we need to do. And I'm going to read from James chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. And in James 4, verse 2, it says, You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not, because you ask not. And then in verse 3, you ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lust. Uh, as we've been continuing on Wednesday night in James, um, James deals with a lot of different subjects, and that's why I like his uh, the whole book of James. He deals with just about every aspect of Christian life as we know it, as we live uh, each and every day, the Christian life. He deals with everything that we deal with. One of those uh, is, is faith. He talks about that in, in chapter 1, about our faith, how to make our faith grow and be stronger in our relationship with God. He deals with trials and tests. We talked about those where, you know, those are things that are put on us that helps us to grow in our faith. Then we deal, he deals with temptations. We face temptations every day. Um, as long as Christ hasn't come back and Satan is still uh, ruling in our world today, we're going to have temptations, especially as Christians. We're going to be tempted. And then in uh, chapter 3, I believe it is, he deals with the controlling of the tongue. And in chapter 4, he deals with prayer briefly. Two verses there, he talks about prayer. And prayer, I believe, is communicating with God. It's our way of, of expressing ourselves to God. It's the way that we just, we talk to him. Uh, he's not impressed with elaborate words. He's not impressed with long prayers and he's not impressed with repetitions, but he is impressed with us just talking to him. And that's what prayer is, just talking to God. Uh, it is something that we are commanded to do in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17. It says that we are to pray without ceasing. And if you understand uh, what, how that verse is, is put out there, the you in the in the verse is understood. We learned that in English class, that whenever there wasn't a subject or a complete or a clear subject in the sentence, then it was you understood. And so when you read that verse, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17, in the King James Version, it says, pray without ceasing. And so you put the word you understood, you know, the word you. So we read it now as you pray without ceasing. So it makes it a command. It makes us uh, something that as Christians, we need to find time to do. We need to find time to talk to God. And I don't understand why today as Christians that we can't find the time to talk to God. But he tells with two, two different things there. In verse two, he says, you lust and have not, you kill and desire to have 
and cannot obtain. You fight war, yet you have not because you ask not. He just simply says you're not praying. And you know, sometimes that's that's what happens with us. We uh, we get something on our mind or something that we're needing help with and for one reason or another, we don't pray. Uh, but it should be something that's just natural to us. It's something that just comes on us every time that we know that we need to pray. Just pray. Talk to God. Second, he says, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss, that you may consume it upon your lust. And what he's dealing with here is many times we ask for the wrong things. Uh, many times we ask for things that are not in God's will. And I believe that, that the majority of the time, if not every time, that if it's not a, according to God's will, he's not going to answer it the way that we want him to. But I also believe that God allows us to have answers to our prayers that sometimes we didn't need it. And, and what I, I talk about like that is something that we're praying for that God is saying, no, no, no. And we keep praying and I believe God, sometimes God teaches us a lesson and lets us have that prayer. And then we think, I shouldn't have done that. But the best thing that we can do today is pray and talk to God. And I wrote down a few things, a few people, a few things that we can pray for. The lost, um, our church. Pray for your pastor and our, and, and the, our family. Um, Jennifer is very anxious to get up here, and we want it to be fast that she can get up here. But until then, we, we need your prayers. Uh, our president and our leaders, they all need our prayers. Uh, especially as they're making decisions that will affect all of us, not just in Washington or not just in Illinois or not just in Louisiana or anywhere else in the United States, but things that are going to affect us all. Our country, you know, pray for a an awakening in our country today of understanding that God... And a relationship with Jesus Christ is the most important thing that's needed today. Again, we love you. And let me close with prayer. Father, we thank you for this uh, opportunity to, for Wednesday to be able to share with uh, your people a uh, portion of your word. But also, Lord, to know that our Wednesday night is also dedicated as our prayer night. And... Lord, we lift up all of those that are on our prayer list, Lord. There's so many, Lord, that we couldn't name each one right now. But, Lord, you know each name, each condition. And, Lord, not only that, but you know the outcome. But, Lord, you call us to pray. You say pray for one another. And we do. We lift up our president tonight, all the decisions that are being made that are going to affect us. We just pray the Lord that in all of this, we know that good is going to come out of it because you're in control still. But Lord, we pray for your help, especially for, Lord, those states that are still seeing uh, the numbers still rising higher than they should. We pray, Lord, that you, again, get control of this because we know, that, Lord, that you have the power to stop it right now. And we ask for that through Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you, and we pray that you forgive us where we fail you, as we pray and ask these things in Jesus Christ's name, amen.